everyone, headed to a call in North Phoenix. A gentleman just gave me a call. Uh, I guess they have two rattlesnakes on the premises and he thinks that they're mating, uh, which is very cool. And the even cooler news is I asked him, I was like, hey, are they kind of pinkish in color? Because I wanted to know. Uh, and he said yes, which means we're headed to go get two mating speckled rattlesnakes. So I'm super, super excited. Specs. I'm so excited. One one hasn't moved. One hasn't moved? Yeah. Cool. This is where they were? Yeah, this is the one that's moving. The other one has not moved at all. Just chilling. Nice. Specs. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's so easy, buddy. All right. You require a lid. <laughs> I interrupted you. How are you doing, Snake? This one's so gray. Oh, wow. Like, oh, it is a lot. <laughs> you thought it was dead? Yeah, I haven't moved in a long time. Nope. Oh, wow, so pretty. Holy cow. <laughs> that one's a little wily. <laughs> I don't trust you. <laughs> it's right at the top. Jump Sorry, off. I wanted to get you guys a picture if you wanted it, but. So this call is going to be a little bit different. These specks are going to be part of a study that we do in the Phoenix Mountain area. So they're going to be pit tagged. So I'm going to drop them off to Eric, who's part of our fence team, who's going to bring them to Brian later today. And Brian will pit tag them and then he will release them back out into the wild. So they will be part of the, the study that we do. Thank you very much. One of the things that we do that we probably don't talk about enough is the research that we do with rattlesnakes living in urban areas. I think that sometimes this channel might come across like we're more like pest control or we're just going out and catching snakes. These interactions are things that we study and all these contact points between people and snakes, the places they're released, the places that they end, sh quiet, places that they show up. places that they show up in people's yards, those are all things that we collect a tremendous amount of data on and publish that information. So that's a whole other kind of work in itself and one that we don't really show here for a lot of reasons, but today I'm gonna to show you one little piece of what we do when we're conducting our research of urban rattlesnakes. In this bucket are two speckled rattlesnakes that were recovered from a home bordering the Phoenix Mountain Preserve in the middle of Phoenix, where people don't expect there to be rattlesnakes, but there's plenty. And this species in particular does really well living right alongside people, visiting their yards for water, all kinds of things, and still has a very good population that is very stable. So what do I mean by stable? Well, they have a population of snakes there. It doesn't seem to be shrinking. They do very well there. There's multiple species. And there's also lots and lots of homes there. And it's not this tumultuous froth of encounters and uh, you know scary experiences that a lot of people have in newly developed areas. It's reached some kind of equilibrium. And we want to understand how that works. So in areas like this, where there's homes that are built alongside desert, it's pretty obvious about how the rattlesnakes live here. They just, well, they live down there and they might visit up here occasionally. But for the city, we need to know exactly what these animals are doing and also what they're not doing. And that helps inform as well how we do relocation work. If you can't know where a snake lives, you have no idea where you can actually put it. So this is where we get a lot of our information of how and where exactly we perform these relocations. So we have at this point cataloged and pit tagged hundreds of rattlesnakes living in the area so we know exactly who they are when we meet them. And in order to do that, that means that we have to put these guys in a tube and implant radio transmitters. So here's what we got. These are the transmitters that we win. Each of them has its own syringe, and this is something that can be read later to give back one of these codes. And those codes are gonna tell us whether we've seen this snake before or not. So this goes just alongside the ribs of the snake, so it is always there. And it doesn't require any energy to transmit because it comes from the transmitter, so we can always tell. It could be 10 years from now, and if that snake ends up in a bucket of ours, we'll be able to tell. 
First step is to get the snake in a tube. These clear plastic tubes allow us to handle the snakes safely without having to worry about where their head is. Uh, it's the easiest way to handle something like this. We're not gonna be pinning the snake or doing anything dangerous at all. Here is a speckled rattlesnake in a tube. So you can see I can hang on to the snake, I can do things with it, uh, I can see its rattle, I can count things, I can give it shots and measure it without having to get in danger at all. And it's very safe for the snake as well. And we're gonna give this thing a pit tag. So this is a pretty long tail for this animal and a pretty gradual taper. Uh, this is a male. Okay, we're just scanning this guy just to make sure it hasn't been seen before. Coming back, nothing. We have not seen the snake, it's new. I'm gonna put it right here. Wipe that down really good with an alcohol pad. Okay, we're gonna go right here, real fast. Oop. And it is in. That's good. Not even a drop of blood. Sure, it's sharp, but does not injure the snake. It'll always be there. And now we can read this. And there's our tag. Now I'm going to measure and weigh this animal and put it aside and do the other one. Measure if I made this uh, special thing that I can attach to something myself so that I can do this in the field without having to have two hands or a partner. It works pretty well. Put that down, put it in the tube, and I measure this straight back to the cloaca, 73 centimeters. That is called the snout to vent length. That's cloaca, that's the vent. And I can put it up here and I can check from the end of the cloaca to the end of the tail and measure that as well. One, two, three, four, five, six centimeters. So a total on this guy, 79 centimeters. Average size speckled. Then I weigh them with one of these. So this whole thing together is 350 grams and then subtracting the weight of the tube, this snake is 310 grams. Again, average size. All right, snake number two. So this snake, you can tell is a female. Looks pretty different. Look at that little short stubby tail and how round it is right here. Wow. So this snake is not gonna get a pit tag. And the reason for it is that this snake, I think, is gravid. She's pregnant. And the last thing I wanna do is risk sticking a needle through one of those little delicate babies that are in there. Uh, that would not only kill them, but that could kill her. It's just not worth it. So I'm gonna take some photographs of her tail, see if we can identify her other ways. But um, yeah, she's, not gonna, she's just gonna get weighed and measured and then go back in the bucket. And now they will both end up going into bags so we can take them out to release them in a suitable site. These bags are very safe for them. They can breathe through them just fine. So normally if we were doing this, we put some kind of marker on here to say which snake is which so that we know where to release them. But these snakes were captured together. So they go to the same place. And I'm gonna go look at some maps and figure out where that is. And then either tonight or tomorrow morning, we're gonna take them back out there and let them go.